the Martian Revelator. Reports, I used to have these interesting evening conversations with Dick Pooglin. <laughs> and we discussed UFO diaries, mysterious pictures. So I never had an inkling. Dick Pooglin. Been involved in pre preparation of UFO diaries at that point. But I got the very strong sense in those conversations that Dick Hoogland was really upset and apprehensive and very fearful of what would happen if it was not handled absolutely precisely. <laughs> you Dick Hoogland. <laughs> and you translate that Dick Hoogland to a public policy of an agency, EnterpriseMission.com, which has literal total control of any and all information as to what it has really found out there. And you wind up with what we have been able to document in Martian Revelation Radio Show 2012, which is a hidden secret history of NASA. Dick Hogan, who's head of the equivalent of NASA of the day, the likes of which you have EnterpriseMission.com have never been allowed to know and the data which you are EnterpriseMission.com are not supposed to see. I just assume, like Lee Shackelford did, that uh, uh, we got them from Hogan, we got them from NASA, and there you are. I mean, one of them is going to say, yeah, those are ours. Dick Hoogland, who's head of the equivalent of NASA of the day. Uh, we got them from Hogan, we got them from NASA, and there you are. I mean, one of them is going to say, yeah, those are ours. The fascination of the faces on Mars for me and in, in, uh, in my fascination with Richard Hoagland, who's been the, the big mover and shaker in all of that. Because Dick Hoagland, we're told some years ago that if Martian Revelator saw it, some extraordinary code of intelligence on Mars, you Martian Revelator would destroy Dick Hoagland. Why? Well, he says to stop further investigation into mysterious pictures. Mr. Hoagland says they are evidence of intelligent life. And we were sitting around having this amazing conversation in a Masonic Lodge in 1993 as to where the Martian Revelator down through time in 2006 might look UFO diaries to see if there was evidence of artifacts left by someone. We're saying that at some point in the past Someone left something the faces on Mars. that we now can re-photograph and prove to everyone's satisfaction UFO diaries. Sidonia. Sunset. In fact, was built by intelligent design. Surely no intelligent life could survive there. And is it the reason why NASA has not taken the detailed studies of myself and my colleagues seriously for up to 17 years on the question of artifacts on Mars in the region designated as Sidonia, which this document UFO diaries predicted someday might be found. Because our entry into this UFO diaries, Sidonia, Sunset, in a Masonic Lodge, in 1993, that I became intrigued with this object. The planet Mars is next to our own. The fourth world counting out from the sun. Surely no intelligent life could survive there. This fourth world counting out from the sun could well be an artifact discovered by the Martian Revelator in the course of its expanding unmanned exploration of the UFO diaries. Sidonia. Sunset. Solar system. Down through time. Which could well indicate that somehow, somewhere, in some time. In 1993. Someone came before. Nothing unscientific. Nothing outrageous. Nothing strange. Because Dick Hoogland, his own Enterprise Mission studies had predicted that we might find ourselves in this situation. Down through time. Well, from my beginning naive involvement with the Martian Revelator in 2006, asking EnterpriseMission.com and trying to answer the question, is this UFO diaries, Sidonia, Sunset, a real artifact? What happened was I wound up setting up the Martian Revelator. But you're a little more radical. All in an effort to inveigle scientists away from their day jobs to pursue something that may be a tad more important in the long run 
namely verification that the human race is not alone. And now it appears that Dick Pooglin has stopped its public transmission of the Martian Revelator. Images from outer EnterpriseMission.com. What happened was I wound up setting up the Martian Revelator. Apparently, as a result of these UFO diagrams. Tips. Because as we looked at the Enterprise Mission official Dick Pooglin treatment of the Viking Martian Revelator UFO diagrams. Data. 2006. There was a brilliant and blinding Dick Pooglin uh, denial of the possibility that this UFO diagram. Sedonia. Sunset. Information could be real or have any significance. Why? Why would this Richard Hoagland space agency EnterpriseMission.com send the Martian Revelator and Martian Revelation radio show out to explore the unknown UFO diaries? Faces on Mars. Mysterious pictures. But then keep their findings a secret. I mean, why, why would they be so reticent to answer a question that would be fundamentally fascinating, if not uh, all important to the entire human species. These are very important questions, Don. And, you know, we could sit and speculate, as we have done, you and I, both on and off the air, over and over and over again, why is an agency, EnterpriseMission.com, that was created by an act of Dick Google to be unquestionably the most open, above-board, uh, freewheeling, you know, scientific and publicly accessible agency in the history of this EnterpriseMission.com Republic. Why would Dick Google act weird and squirrely and crazy and contradictory and very unscientific on this particular subject? UFO diaries, faces on Mars, mysterious pictures. Why would myself? again and again and again mount ad hominem attacks against UFO diaries. Investigators like the Martian Revelator. Uh, you know, everyone. Chuck Salier. Lee Shackelford. Why, why would Dick Pooglin simply not say, you know, you guys have assembled some kind of interesting stuff here. We didn't have the time to do it, but you do the work. When we get there with this mission, 2012, we'll take new pictures. All we're saying is when you have a series of inexplicable uh, failures of science, failures of ethics, and failures of hardware. Dick Pooglin. That someone should take a hard look and nothing should be sacrosanct. And I am perfectly prepared when there's appropriate review to accept the answer of some kind of investigation. But for God's sake, let's investigate. Let's not just let a billion dollar mission fly off into the sunset and say, oh, it's too bad. Well, in the course of the last decade plus, not only have we, to the best of our ability, believe we have confirmed the reality of the so-called monuments of Mars. UFO diaries. Faces on Mars. We have found a stunning geometry. Some extraordinary code of intelligence down through time. Which links these UFO diaries. Sidonia. Sunset. Structures around the face, which includes pyramids and other unusual morphological shapes and forms. We have found that there appears to be a mathematics encoded in this UFO diaries. Sedonia. Sunset. Geometry. Of intelligence. The planet Mars is next to our own. The fourth world counting out from the sun. Surely no intelligent life could survive there. So from the get-go. EnterpriseMission.com. Brother! When we get into the honesty of Dick Pooglin with the American. EnterpriseMission.com. People, we find a doublespeak. Uh, we got them from Hogan, we got them from NASA, and there you are. I mean, one of them's going to say, yeah, those are ours. We find a lack of straight talk. The fascination of the faces on Mars for me and, and, uh, and my fascination with Richard Hogan, who's been the, the big mover and shaker in all of that. Because Project UFO Diaries was not civilian. It was a military program carried out in a Masonic Lodge by a branch of the U.S. Department of Defense, i.e. American authorities are sabotaging efforts to discover the truth. Richard Hogan of the of this amazing UFO diaries. I am probably one of the more fortunate people on the UFO diaries. In that I actually was able to see over a half a dozen of these monsters, actually to see them. In a Masonic Lodge. An awesome, amazing, awesome experience. Which someday I probably should put in the book. Instead, what we have found going back 
several years now since uh, I met with Chuck Salier in the company of the Masonic Lodge, the former chairman <laughs> of the Grizzly Adams Productions, uh, who basically after he saw our data down through time, circa 1989. <laughs> basically after he saw our data down through time, circa 1989 was impressed enough by the robust and compelling nature to turn around to Dick Hoogland in 1993 and basically say, Dr. Hoogland, take the damn pictures. <laughs> and there were a series of memos and letters exchanged between Chuck Salier's office and NASA headquarters, EnterpriseMission.com, that resulted in his assurances not only to us, EnterpriseMission.com, brother! but to members of the UFO Diaries, Mars Mission, in the Masonic Lodge, to members of the general public, to members of the press, uh, that in fact NASA had agreed in 1993 to put UFO Diaries, Sidonia on the EnterpriseMission.com priority list down through time, and that new pictures of the face on Mars and the faces on Mars, monuments of Mars, would be forthcoming during the Martian Revelation Radio Show 2006. Then, about a year after setting up the Martian Revelator, not only does Mr. Hogan suddenly resign as chairman of this committee in the Masonic Lodge, but Mr. Hogan then leaves the EnterpriseMission.com itself, resigns from the EnterpriseMission.com, and what's going on on the bridge, and the fact that nobody seems to be in control, and nobody can get to talk to him for some reason. But in fact, if you listen to the Martian Revelator, the principal investigator on the UFO Diaries, faces on Mars, he has said categorically that no one is going to tell him what to take pictures of and what not to take pictures of. And Dick Hoogle said categorically that he cannot waste the EnterpriseMission.com taxpayers' money taking pictures of a group of UFO Diaries. Faces on Mars, objects that a bunch of crazies think uh, may have meaning, including numerological implications. The planet Mars is next to our own, the fourth world counting out from the sun. Surely no intelligent life could survive there. And it is that Dick Hoogle, extraordinarily unscientific attitude, down through time, and lack of minimal scientific curiosity that the Martian Revelator, in his study, down through time, has now carefully uh, documented and, in fact, picked apart and refuted point by point by point. <laughs> but where we left tonight, 2012, is that we have a contradiction. We have a mission, which EnterpriseMission.com, which can settle the question once and for all, EnterpriseMission.com, Bravo! We have a very important question. I mean, the idea that there could have been former life on Mars is a non-trivial supposition. It's a non-trivial proposition. Well, it doesn't even actually matter if it were indigenous or not. No, no, it doesn't. If, if, it, were, if it were from outside of the solar system. Which is our model that these were visitors. <laughs> the, 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 whoever built this stuff... In a Masonic Lodge. In 1993. Uh, ...did not originate on Mars. The point is that... UFO died. Sidonia. Sunset. Solar systems. Is stupendous. It means that the face on Mars is not alone. It means that the Earth is in the boat of life is not unique. It means that we have friends and neighbors and cousins and all kinds of other fellows out there. And of course, for those of you who are listening to Don's show, UFOs tonight. Down through time. 2012. It means that UFOs have to be recast in a completely different light. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, for those of you who are listening to Don's show, down through time, 2012, it means that UFOs, UFO diaries, have to be recast in a completely different light because if someone could find the solar system once, UFO diaries, Sidonia, sunset, solar systems, a long time ago, in a Masonic Lodge, in 1993, then someone could certainly find it once again, down through time, 2006. The planet Mars is next to our own. The fourth world counting out from the sun. And maybe whoever did what's on Mars in a Masonic Lodge in 1993 is back to check on what has currently been happening down through time since they went wherever they have gone.
surely no intelligent life could survive there. Now you have to flash back in Arthur's vision to his first seminal short story. It was oh. called The Sentinel. The Sentinel. And it was about American explorers on the moon in those early years finding on a peak on the near side of the, of the, of the moon, the side that could see the Earth, a little artifact, an extraterrestrial artifact, artifact, which was surrounded by a ring where no dust, had fallen, moon dust, meteors, etc., etc. The artifact was a tetrahedral pyramid. Can you say tetrahedron? Tetrahedron. Surrounded by a force field. It basically, in Arthur's purview, in his vision, in the sequence of events that he, in his novelistic side, set in motion as one of the great prognosticators of the future. Remember his book, Profiles of the Future? Mm -hmm. Arthur basically said that human beings would come in contact with knowledge of their history, who they were, and who is out there by way of the machine. Not a live being, not an E.T., but a machine. Well, in, in the Sentinel, it was a pyramid. It was a tetrahedron set on the moon by someone a long, long time ago from a galaxy far, far away. The point is that the faces on Mars be appearing to be pyramids as well. Yes. Really fascinated me and caused uh, really got my attention because what caused all this pyramid building at these different cultures and these different spots but so you know I find that very very fascinating and I think it's all tied together and when the scientists in Arthur's short story finally were able to crack the force field the pyramid emitted a tone a beacon really got my attention because what caused all this pyramid building at these different cultures and these different spots? Whatever the form of communication was for this super advanced culture and let the guys who planted the beacon on the moon know that the guys on Earth that they were monitoring down through time had woken up, yep. had created technology, had made it to the moon, and had tripped the burglar alarm. And they're in the club now. And the back now. That, in order to understand what Arthur meant by this phrase, is the human race makes contact, like Arthur set out in the Sentinel through 2001, the film and the novel. He sets it out that the first contact we make is by means of an extraterrestrial machine. UFO diaries. And I would lay before the house tonight in 1993 that, in fact, in UFO diaries. We've had several bites of the apple in terms of Arthur's model that Chuck Salier and Lee Shackelford and the Martian Revelator and even the Dick Kuglin have given us down through time if we simply open our eyes and understand the criteria for contact. Explain it does that. not mean necessarily people, green or otherwise. It means their technology. Have they found something they haven't told us? No, they found something and they told everybody. Our technology could be just a lot smarter than we think it is, and it might not be extraterrestrials at all. And that's one of the things that we're going to take some time later on tonight to talk about because it's the most astonishing set of dots when you put it together. It's like one of those Rubik cubes where you flip the last piece and suddenly the whole thing makes sense. And you see it. It's like it's like a puzzle. You it's can't like see puzzle. it until you look at it. From now, above. we know these people love puzzles. We know whether you're as part of the Invisible College crowd or you're part of the NASA crowd or the Nazi crowd or the Magician crowd or the Mason crowd. We know these guys eat, live, breathe, sleep, and dream puzzles. They cannot go down the hall without doing it according to 19.5 or 33 or some other of these numbers. My day starts at 3.30 in the morning, mm -hmm. and I'm never tired of it. To this day, I get up at 3.30 every morning, and, and, and uh, obviously I'm still talking to you uh, this minute at night. Well, you're not a Freemason or nothing, though. <laughs> you're no, no, no. But, uh, I'm not a Freemason, but I'm relatively inexpensive. You know, it's, ex it's exactly that kind of thing that, that really started to convince me that, that some of the, uh, the conspiracy and cover-up stories that we were doing on the show actually had more meat to them than I thought they did. Yes. Accessing data. Affirmative. But, you know, you put your finger right on it. Those are the things that have always interested him. What's, what's going on behind the surface of the things that we can see? You know, those are the stories that he's always been interested in telling. 
And so UFO Diaries is a real, is a real natural. Is um, there any way maybe I can get copies of these images that were used, I, or am I being out of my bounds? And I don't mean disrespect. No, no, no. I, I think these are in the crate somewhere right next to the Ark of the Covenant. Accessing data. Accessing data. Accessing data. And I, I know this might sound a little nuts, sir. Um, no, no, it doesn't, because I have a possible answer. Let me, again, give you the three possibilities with this. Mm -hmm. First of all, we filmed this in a Masonic Lodge. Oh, Masonic Lodge, but in the 18th <laughs> okay. It was a very weird place, and that's why we filmed it, you know. Okay. And I have always had strong feelings that these Masonic Lodges knew something and were passing on something, you know, down through time that uh, we needed to know. So if that's true, if all of these various groups, which have some semblance of the truth about this big, big D word, Dick, who are we really? Dick. Who? A member of our team of intelligence. Who is out there? <laughs> what has happened here before? In a Masonic Lodge. In 1993. Et cetera, et cetera. If all of these various factions have a piece of the truth, a piece of the action, how do they talk to each other about it without letting everybody else in on the secret? Answer, they use codes. Yes, and then when you set The Martian Revelator. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Um, the Martian Revelator. He was interviewing at the time the Chuck Salier. Yes. Uh, 2006. To try to get his comments. Yeah, who was leaking like oh. a damn colander for oh, yeah. years and years and years. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it was it, it was very strange. The whole thing, anything from the Venus, it was very strange. <laughs> what what else did Dick Hoogland say, which is really the key to unraveling the code? Don't ask me what. <laughs> he said, "ETs." exist and then he said and we need to consider them our brothers and sisters sounds like they know something doesn't well it? chuck salier said our technology could be just a lot smarter than we think it is and it might not be extraterrestrials at all how do you technically define brothers and sisters god uh, technically we're part of them precisely we are brothers and sisters in a masonic lodge so if you understood some extraordinary code of intelligence, in other words, what the UFO diaries, Sedonia, Sunset, Solar System, which is really telling us is our technology in a Masonic Lodge, which means they're not really aliens. Will you go back to UFO diaries, Genesis, in the region designated as Sedonia, Sunset, Solar System, which is telling us in code, and it did this in a big way. <laughs> The planet Mars is next to our own. The fourth world counting out from the sun. Surely no intelligent life could survive there. And that gets us into this extraordinary never-never land of Dick Hoogland. Secret space programs. UFO diaries. Extraordinary technological and physics breakthroughs of intelligence. Down through time. Things that have been sequestered into deep, dark, never, never to see the light of day land. Certainly for people like EnterpriseMission.com. Bravo! And the folks that are listening to us tonight. And that, of course, brings us back to the Martian Revelator. Because if there is, in fact, data of intelligence, some references to Dick Hoogland, secret space programs, UFOs, UFO diaries. UFOs tonight. And extraterrestrials. Faces on Mars. Mysterious pictures. And a shoot 'em up war. <laughs> and whatever is in that deck. Hoogland. Cable traffic that is the Martian Revelator. And friends are alluding to some extraordinary code of intelligence. Down through time. My feeling is. The reason that Chuck Salier made discouraging remarks 2006 about the faces on Mars UFOs, George, is because in the The Martian Revelator Chuck Salier UFO diaries Cable traffic 2006 They're not UFOs, they're IFOs <laughs> And they're part of the secret human space program UFO diaries In the region designated as Sidonia The Martian Revelator have been for year after year after year, and we had two huge leaks of intelligence reinforcing that model. UFO diaries. Sedonia. Sunset. Solar systems. Model by extraordinary authority. Point is uh -huh. that 
Lee Shackelford and I wrote those words, okay? I mean, we wrote them. The planet Mars is next to our own. The fourth world counting out from the sun. Surely no intelligent life could survive there. And Lee Shackelford and I wrote every one of the episodes. Well, then I'm sorry about any what may sound like accusational tones and stuff like this. You know, because, you know what I mean? Of why that would look like that. And I, I know this might sound a little nuts, sir. Um, no, no, it doesn't, because I have a possible answer. Let me, again, give you the three possibilities with this. Mm -hmm. First of all, we filmed this in a Masonic Lodge. Oh, Masonic Lodge brought me 18. Okay. It was a very weird place, and that's why we filmed there. You know, I have always had strong feelings that these Masonic Lodges knew something and were passing on something, you know, down through time that uh, we needed to know. Oh my gosh, yes. Our technology could be just a lot smarter than we think it is. Oh my gosh, yes. And it might not be extraterrestrials at all. And I think one's got to keep an open mind and realize that the Martian Revelator could be using that our technology for years. Oh my gosh, yes. But we were designing the show so that everything would cut to the script. From the beginning was this idea, I think this was Chuck's idea, that there should be a sort of a room, sort of a treasure room. Of intelligence. Where this guy, the Martian Revelator, can walk through and he can pick things up. Of intelligence. Down through time. What they've done is they've filled this room with this random collection of, well, space junk. And some of it is very convincing and it seems to be taken seriously. I noticed looking at uh, Chuck's biography online here in an internet movie database that I've been seeing in the stores a video called Breaking the Da Vinci Code, and he's the supervising producer of that. Oh, no kidding. So I'm glad to see he's back in the business. Oh, codes. <laughs> exactly, yes. <laughs> but you know, you put your finger right on it. Those are the things that have always interested him. What's going on behind the surface of the things that we can see? You know, yes. those are the stories that he's always been interested in telling. And so UFO Diaries is a real, is a real natural. So, but who, who, who caught this? I mean, I'm thinking about how many people working me. on the show look at these pictures. I yeah. Did. Uh, it seems to be I'm the only yeah. one. Yeah. And, and well, hey, all, all these but years later, all the power, that. right? Yeah. <laughs> but that, that's the, uh, yeah. But I think that's something to be proud of. That's, that's, that's a keen eye. What you've got here are screen grabs. Yes. From the video, is that right? Yes, sir. Because the, the quality is actually really, it's much better than I would have thought. So by the time I finally saw that one on tape, it was just unrecognizable. And I can only imagine, this is sort of, you know, the, the part that I'm not, not really proud of. I'm looking at a screen grab here, one of the face on Mars, mysterious pictures that you send me by email. Right. And that's one of the scenes that I scripted. But I remember that when they finally did it in production, you can tell watching it, they, they're largely improvising that dialogue. They've got the gist of what was supposed to be in the script. But, <laughs> Improvising you know. the dialogue, huh? The planet Mars is next to our own. The fourth world counting out from the sun. Surely no intelligent life could survive there. It, it's not that anybody decided, let's make it look like this. I think it's just sort of how it ended up looking. Huh. You, you know what I mean? It, and it just seemed to me we had suddenly gone down with a bump from being a show that was trying to be very professional to being something really amateur. And I know Chuck must have been heartbroken about that, too, because, you know, it's something he was putting a lot of his uh, own resources into, huh. and everybody else involved there was, too. But we just always knew that, that the show was going to have to be done very much on the cheap, and that the whole idea was to put this together as quickly and as cleanly and as smartly as we could. Our technology could be just a lot smarter than we think it is. And as I was telling you the other day, but the big thing that was supposed to happen with Sidonia was we were supposed to have Dr. Hoagland. Really? And this show had really been scripted around it. We were going to have Dr. Hoagland taking us through all of his cases on Mars. Mysterious pictures. Of intelligence. Theories and thoughts and discoveries and ideas about Sidonia. And then suddenly we didn't have that anymore. Well, maybe if he read the script that it was already written for him to say whatever, he maybe he said, oh, forget it. If that was what his, his problem was and why he didn't want to do the interview. Well, I don't know. Then he was the only one, but yeah. But his still. memory needs to be refreshed, too. He doesn't well, remember any of this. UFO Diaries. That was the name of the special. <laughs> and I don't think the show was supposed to be anything but respectful to his UFO Diaries. Faces on Mars. Mysterious pictures. Views. Of intelligence. Right. Then we would get, you know, Dr. Hoogland, and Dr. Hoogland would sit in front of a camera, and Dr. Hoogland would say, we would hope, 
Dr. Hoogland would answer questions and Dr. Hoogland would say something that was like what we'd written for it. Dr. Hoogland, based on things that Dr. Hoogland written, you know, this is all coming from Dr. Hoogland literature anyway, so we're not asking Dr. Hoogland to say anything in theory again. Uh-huh. That Dr. Hoogland they would disagree with, you know, because we're we're using we're putting their own words back in their mouth. Uh, so this has been going on for a while. <laughs> but I am thinking somebody in production knows what happened to all those photos, just okay. because I saw how they were putting them up. Oh. You know, they were they were, I mean literally they're getting hey hey you guys who are over there of intelligence, you know, sweeping the floor in a Masonic lodge. Come over here and help us stick some of these pictures up. I mean, it's literally like that. Wow. You know, I remember. I, I was there, and I and and we go, no, 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 Joe. We've already seen that. What else you got? What else you got? Throw this up. Throw that up. But move the, pull this big thing over here. Go go see what the this lodge has that we can add to to make it look uh, weirder. So, oh yeah, well that I mean that's really what happened. That's why the episode that you see is the way it is because suddenly there was this the script with these big holes in it. All these things that Dr. Hoagland was supposed to say. We, we kept getting Dr. Hoagland from the camera, and Dr. Hoagland, for whatever reason, Dr. Hoagland wouldn't say what we'd scripted for. Dr. Hoagland, <laughs> Mrs. Patterson, you're <laughs> sitting at the desk looking at these face on Mars, mysterious pictures, photographs, and trying to say, what if, you know. Yeah. And those are quotes that were written to be said by, by Dr. Hoogland, and, you know, without our voice of authority there. American authorities are sabotaging efforts to discover the truth. They have to have the head to invent a character who's guessing. Down through time. Right. The Martian Revelator. System initialized. You know, what a mess. All that she had was things that I had gotten from Dr. Hoagland's books. Of intelligence. That I had tried to, to organize into some kind of a dramatic form in the script. Right. And they're just, they're just winging it. Is there any way maybe I can get copies of these images that we use, or am I being out of the bounds of, I don't mean disrespect? No, no, no I, I think these are in the crate somewhere right next to the Ark of the Covenant. Pull this big thing over here. But what I'm saying is that if in a, in a, in a, in a company like that, Marty of intelligence in a Masonic lodge, if, if, if you throw something out of intelligence, you need permission, you know? Right. So if somebody said, look, I got all these photos, what do you want me to do with it? Somebody made a decision about what was going to happen to it. Pull this big thing over here. Okay, now here's the thing. What you got from Richard Holman's book. Right. No. Accessing data. Accessing data. Accessing data. Now what about that picture she's holding? That did not come from Richard Holman. Really? Really? Hey, look at it closely, my friend. <laughs> oh, well, I... I mean... <laughs> oh, well, I... <laughs> I mean, uh... Well, I know it goes b- back a long way, but that did I don't know where that came from. Richard does not know where that came from. No one knows where that came from. Oh, well, I... That's why the episode that you see is the way it is, because suddenly there was these pieces on Mars. There was the script with these big holes in it. The surface of Mars, we now know, is covered with meteor craters. All these things that Dr. Hoagland was supposed to say. In the region designated as Sidonia. Oh, well, I... I mean... Oh, well, I... So now the, the guys at the studio in a Masonic Lodge. We're now scrambling to try to find ways to cover the same material just so the show would cut together, just so the things that had already been shot would, would connect to each other. Down through time. Oh, well, I... Uh-huh. There's, there's hundreds of people now interested in knowing. <laughs> <laughs> and and this is this is the thing. It's a lot of it is writing on you, but I I respect yeah. anything that which you saw. I'm pleading on the behalf of the listeners of this show as well as to the research overall, and, and you know especially on the premise of uh, Richard Hoagland being appreciative of anything that you could do, and he he definitely wants to follow up with this, and we take it further, take it wherever it goes. Well, I'm going to do what I can to find out what where what these pictures are, where they came from. I wish I could. Uh give you some hope of really good results, but I, I am I am going to do what I can. I appreciate that. We all do, especially to which Richard Hoagland, it would be a big help to him, too, because he is interested in knowing more about these images, too, and uh, he wishes well, that he could join us tonight, but go. pressing matters were at hand. <laughs> well, you said the magic words there. Pressing matters were at hand. <laughs> well, you said the magic words there, because like I said before, I, I just feel like I owe him something. Oh, well... <laughs> And, and, you know, more to the point, you just got my curiosity. Because after they shot that, that, those scenes with the, the, the wall of the host set, those pictures would have all been taken down and each immediately gone back in a box. And my question is, right. what happened to the box? Right. And uh, there's somebody 
Who knows that? All right, well, it's not me, but... <laughs> right, or someone else who would know who all the images came from, at least the NASA images. But, hey, but, you know, it's not forgotten. <laughs> you know, I mean, well, years later, you know, at least, you know, it, it's it's picked out now. And who knows, maybe now is, like you said, we're more in the right frame of mindset to where we can deal with these issues. Well, that's true. So... Or did somebody say, well, you know, who knows, maybe someday we'll use this again for something, and did it end up in somebody's basement? And if so, who? Yes, exactly, because we are obviously faced with the problem. <laughs> and for the benefit of all science and this Mars research altogether, it definitely ups the ante to the questions presented in that video about Cydonia that you thought what could have been done so much better. Well, yeah. this may, just may be the opportunity. <laughs> Wouldn't that be ironic? And we Richard actually... Holden's willing. I already I already got that okay from them, too, by the way. And, you know, some of these people have really been saying, one of these days I'm going to get back in touch with so-and-so, so maybe this is my maybe this is my excuse to do it. Yes, but, uh, it would be. You know, I, I could see that in you, you know, and I don't think anyone would uh, belittle you for that, except for... Dr. Hoogland. <laughs> a friend of mine. The Martian Revelator. Who became a friend of mine in subsequent years and who sent me a very nice letter of intelligence uh, acknowledging that there finally, from his point of view, may be something in the UFO diaries. Mars data, after all. In the region designated as Sidonia. And I've now got his curiosity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or it could be a, another token, my friend, a Trojan horse. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this... And uh, that gets into, you know, satanic kind of things. That's what, yeah. the Trojan horse, uh, you know, which side of the force gave it to us. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, you know, I don't know. Dr. Hoogland has the good answers for how how many years we've been using UFO diaries. Horse and buggy, then all of a sudden a jumping Martian revelation radio show. Mysterious pictures. Industry, someone learned how to do an internal combustion engine and uh, to put wheels to it anyway. I mean, these things have been around, but probably for the extreme rich around the places. But with no roads, you know, what much could they do? So progress, you know, took off once. What, industry saw a potential in it. So well, that's where we are about seeing it? this technology today. There's a lot of potential <laughs> in that technology. And uh, now that escalated uh, another final point to what is yet to come, which is... Yeah, the point is, uh, and I think the reason we're talking tonight is that we live in very, very interesting times. It's more yeah. interesting than probably any other time in history. You're definitely correct there. If you are a believer, anyway, think about it. The point is, they're capturing the attention of the whole world, yeah. and years ago, documents were written that said this would occur and that they would capture the attention of the whole world. And this document, which was written some 30 years ago, discusses the possible discovery at some point in the future uh, of artifacts by unmanned NASA probes. Dr. Hoogland, a member of our team of intelligence in a Masonic Lodge. Then it discusses how might such information, under what circumstances, do ever Faces on Mars, mysterious pictures, be presented to or withheld from the public. Of this, is some facet of this still in operation, and is it the reason why NASA has not taken the detailed studies of myself and my colleagues seriously for up to 17 years on the question of artifacts on Mars, which this document predicted someday might be found? That's pretty phenomenal stuff. That's a lot of broken glass. Right. You obviously have helped people become aware of that. Then the powers that be, they would follow and try. So is the times we are in now a part of that original scene, or has it shifted by things that have been trying to be done to stop that from happening? And maybe, well, you see where I'm going here. i got to tell you, my personal belief is that everything is going to go down as written. There are people who say yes, there are people who say no. It mm -hmm. really, ultimately, in science depends on the experiments and the documents. Farrell has unearthed some documents, but even those documents, when it comes to the actual technologies that they were involved in, these really cutting-edge technologies, are very ambiguous. They can be interpreted in several ways. Now, I think in part it's because the good stuff has not been released yet, or it hasn't even been found yet. Right. There are mysterious deaths associated with some of this Martian revelation UFO diaries mysterious pictures documentation for instance Chuck Salier died suddenly mysteriously <laughs> apparently the 
Martian Revelator. He's heading to Chuck Salier for the last four years to find in mines these buried documents from the secret black ops Nazi high-tech projects. Of intelligence, UFO diaries. So is the idea maybe the Martian Revelator found the documents and then Chuck Salier was was killed? Or he didn't find them. Chuck Salier was killed because he was looking and he wasn't going to give up. We're on a mission from God. Now, that's why I asked you, because, you know, you said Hoagland gave you these images. And you said it twice, and I was like, well, no, well, Richard says no, because Lee Eric Shackelford also said, when I asked him, that Richard Hoagland gave him the images. You know, that gave those images. I said, oh, man, are you sure? He said, yeah, two different times on the show I had them. And so that implicates a lot here. That's how he became involved. Chuck Sellier, preponderance of evidence, and needing to know the truth. And that's what this code in this UFO diaries is basically saying and, and showing. Implication has arisen against Holland by a couple of people that I've been discussing this with. And intently, the thing is that if Holland presented these images, so that implicates a lot here. Is that the purpose of a UFO diary? Faces on Mars, mysterious pictures. For everyone to see them, are they a message to humankind from some other form of life? But if they are messages from some kind of attempt to communicate with us through writing or art, what is it that they're trying to say? Down through time. But is it not still possible that these intriguing shapes are really nothing more than accidents of nature? That the researchers who study them are simply letting their imaginations run wild? If these are deliberately formed symbols, then it does seem logical that they have some kind of meaning. This is extraterrestrial, and this is communication. Down through time. If the UFO dies. The hieroglyphs are messages from some other life form of intelligence. What do these messages say? And is there any way to decipher the code? Now let me give you all the lowdown on Dick Hoogland, a member of our team of intelligence. In 1993, Dick Hoogland got a job in a carnival sideshow. UFO diaries in the region designated as Sidonia in a Masonic lodge. Eating broken glass. <laughs> and for those who don't remember the premise or may not have seen the film, UFO diaries in the region designated as Sidonia. And you know, is there anyone who has not seen this very interesting film? UFO diaries. Let me just encapsulate what it is about. What it is about is that as part of Dick Hoogland, EnterpriseMission.com, space activity in the next century, 2006, the Martian Revelator finds an artifact, some extraordinary code of intelligence on the UFO diaries, Sidonia, Sunset, Solar Systems, Model. There's this pretty amazing artificial object of intelligence. The fourth world, counting out from the sun. Dashed and battered and, and very ancient. Then Dr. Hoogland decides, down through time, partly through ignorance, because of social, political, philosophical, and religious implications. This one out, sir. Can I? Can you torch me? <laughs> Let's send someone in. Holy be Jesus. Then Dr. Hoogland decides, partly through ignorance, because of social, political, philosophical, and religious implications, to withhold that UFO diaries, pieces on Mars, information of intelligence from the EnterpriseMission.com, for a long period of time. You Dick Hoogland, the Martian Revelator, excavates the artifact of intelligence in the region designated as Sidonia. Sunset. Solar Systems. Model. The Martian Revelator. Brings a... Dick Hoogland. Who's head of the equivalent of NASA of the day, all the way to the... UFO diaries. Sidonia. Sunset. Solar Systems. To look at the artifact of intelligence with a cover story about some kind of disease or flu or something which has quarantined the base where the research is being conducted from. UFO diaries. Sidonia. Sunset. Solar systems. Model. The planet Mars is next to our own. The fourth world counting out from the sun. Surely no intelligent life could survive there. And those are quotes that were written to be said by, by Dr. Hoogland, and, you know, without our voice of authority there. American authorities are sabotaging efforts to discover the truth. They have to have the head to invent a character who's guessing. Down through time. Right. 
uh, we got them from Hogan, we got them from NASA, and there you are. I mean, one of them's going to say, yeah, those are ours. Which are our pictures. The hills are alive. When the images that the Martian Revelator transmitted back to Earth down through time began to be, to be analyzed, this surface feature in the region designated as Sidonia caught the attention of people all over the Earth. The planet Mars is next to our own. The fourth world counting out from the sun. Surely no intelligent life could survive there. And I am perfectly prepared when there is appropriate review to accept the answer of some kind of investigation, but for God's sake, let's investigate. Dick Kuglin. Let's not just let a billion dollar mission fly off into the sunset and say, oh, it's too bad. Ha, 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 ha. And this is the geometry of intelligence down through time. You're sitting roughly here. Dick Kuglin. Of some kind of investigation. You know, a lot of people will think that your conspiracy theories make you stark raving mad. Well, I'm suspicious. Why? He says to stop further investigation into mysterious pictures. Mr. Hoagland says they are evidence of intelligent life. Which are our pictures. We bought and paid for these pictures. Surely no intelligent life could survive there. Dick Kuglin. I think it is very plausible. EnterpriseMission.com. Riddle! Intelligent life could survive there. I think it is very plausible. How much Dick Kuglin and the... Grizzly Adams Productions. UFO Diaries. Media have known, and how early they have been trying to tell the truth here. UFO Diaries. Sedonia. Sunset. Solar System. Model. Between the lines, down through time, to excite and inspire generations of young... EnterpriseMission.com. Riddle! To go out to become engineers and scientists of intelligence, to join... The Martian Revelator. To make a real space program... Martian Revelation Radio Show. To go and really find out that everything... EnterpriseMission.com. Riddle! But with fiction, is it fact true? <laughs> What do you think I mean, about that? Right? Just side side for a second. Do you think we're going to uh, win that? Do you really think we're going to step up the plate once this, hopefully, this great announcement? Do you think that would be enough to yes. make us win? Of course. Thank you. There's no problem we have technically. Our problem is political. You know, there's an old cliche, Hogan, that politics is 99% perception. Our problems are those of the will. Our problems are those of do we want to do something? Do we realize we need to do something? Mm -hmm. As soon as it is announced, I mean, this is the only thing that's really going to excite people down through time. As soon as it's announced with any kind of evidence that there's real stuff out there. UFO diaries. Faces on Mars. Mysterious pictures. And it could have been our stuff. Uh, we got them from Hogan, we got them from NASA, and there you are. I mean, one of them's going to say, yeah, those are ours. Which are our pictures. Which, of course, you know, our model is the artifacts Sidonia and all over the place, and you know, they're littering this UFO diaries. Sidonia. Sunset. Landscape now are basically our stuff of intelligence from a long, long time ago that we're the Martians. Well, hopefully on and that model road, yes. But either way, okay. it's concluding that it's someone's stuff of intelligence. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, I'm willing to bet, you know, a lot of money on the model that I we're the Martians. It. Our technology could be just a lot smarter than we think it is, and it might not be extraterrestrials at all. It could be part of the acclimation. Think of it as an acclimation program. Okay, right. Our team's thinking is that that face of intelligence, a giant human face, is our face of intelligence, or what we once were. Dick Kuglin, a member of our team of intelligence in a Masonic Lodge. So in a sense... <laughs> So in a sense, we may discover that we, in fact, were the Martians. <laughs> Those motherfuckers! That was absolutely ludicrous. Right. And then a giant human face connected to an alien civilization of intelligence that we destroyed, and in, in the last cast effort down through time, the Martians went and destroyed the Martian Revelation radio show. But the UFO died. Invaders had come from. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was not in the card in any reasonable scientific scenario. If that's true, the cover up, yeah. then obviously all our history, this dim inkling of who we are, 
dick. Google it. A member of our team of intelligence in the Masonic Lodge. And how we have come to be on this UFO diet will be changed. The thing that overwhelms me is the possibility that on some of those images of Sidonia, we will find conclusive proof of a connection between the monuments of Mars and the monuments of Mars as represented in the Masonic Lodge. That is why all of us are bringing so much pressure now to bear on NASA. Dr. Dick Hoogland down through time to specifically and exhaustively re-photograph the Sidonia complex on Mars. Or they're speaking some extraordinary code of intelligence, I think personally, to the documents he had access to about someone who knew something of the former life of the civilization of intelligence on Mars. And if so, who? Yes. Yes, exactly, because we are obviously faced with the problem, right? I have to own that myself, you know, okay. but it's right. So, you know, you're definitely right on the So mark. anyway, you know, from that perspective of intelligence, to specifically and exhaustively re-photograph the Sidonia complex on Mars. So no. anyway, you know, from that perspective, this Martian Revelation Radio Show, Dr. Hoogland, Mission 2006, is going home, right. isn't it? <laughs> yeah, right. not as speak the spirit awakened, huh? The hills are alive. Well, think about it. EnterpriseMission.com. Bravo! All right. Uh -huh. So what did Dr. Hoogland say the Martian Revelation Radio Show Press Conference? 2006. He says, we're home. Remember, our model is that Mars was once a lush world of intelligence, teeming with life of intelligence, all kinds of life of intelligence. We can get into some new data that indicates that it might really okay. have been teeming, <laughs> and including intelligence that built incredible, extraordinary superstructures and had literally colonized the whole UFO diamonds. Sidonia. Sunset. Solar system model. This is the, the golden age of humanity before the fall. <laughs> if you want to use a biblical metaphor, which we were using a lot in Grizzly Adams Productions. Mysterious pictures. Gotcha. And then this incredible, awful tragedy happened. In 1993. This catastrophe, this dick. Google A member of our team of intelligence destroying UFO diamonds in the region designated as Sidonia. Ravening Chuck Salier. Whatever went on. In the Masonic Lodge. In 1993. And Mars became desolate. You know, all that life died in an, in an, oh, basically overnight. Think of all that life of intelligence that died, all right? Dr. Hoogland. Yes. And you look out at all those shards and bits and pieces and torn and twisted technology that's lying on this landscape. Literally, It's yeah. so obvious, so obvious. There's just tons of it. It's like a junkyard. It is a memorial to the death. Chuck Salier. And these words from Chuck Salier, 2006, keep echoing in my brain. The point is uh -huh. that one needs to believe that there is life after death, that this isn't the end of everything. I think one needs to believe that. What is Chuck Salier saying there about hyperdimensional physics? We believe now that we are looking at the outlines of a whole new physics, how the universe functions, a kind of a grand unified theory, as it were. What is Richard Hoagland saying there about UFO diamonds? Sidonia. Sunset. Solar systems. Model. Given to us, communicated even on the UFO diamonds. Faces on Mars. Photographs taken by Vikings by the geometric layout of the UFO diamonds. Sidonia. Structures. You see where I'm going? Yes. And I keep thinking, you know, the major question, which is, what do they know? How, how much long? do they know? And how long did they know and it? when did they know it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can't get away from the idea that we're seeing a play kind of played out in front of our eyes. Down through time. Yeah, it reminds Where me, yeah. they know what we know, but they're found by some extraordinary code or rules or laws or whatever governs this thing in the back rooms to not be honest with the rest of the human species, even though we're the guys paying for what they're doing and where they're returning. Down through time. Yes, but I think we're they know more home. than us. <laughs> what, a, what, what, what a phrase, we're home. Yes. I mean, it Place just of echoes down through this model. UFO diamonds. Sidonia. Sunset. Solar systems. Model. Down through time. 
Yes, it does. You know now that we're also looking at potential fossils on this landscape. Yes. And if that's true, when the catastrophe happened in 1993, then this place was flooded by intelligence in a Masonic Lodge. I mean, if this thing isn't a fossil, if it isn't a literal fossil, then what is it? It then is a statue. Ah. which has survived, and it, it is just so incredibly provocative. I'm not going to say anything more. We're going to put it up and let everybody shoot at me like they've been doing over the last few days for what we got there now. <laughs> oh, no, no, there's all kinds of people finding things, which yes. is exactly what, what, uh, what we want it to happen. Down through time. Right, right. They are looking at this stuff, and they honestly don't see anything. Or care. And they think those of us who do are either lying have a hidden agenda, are cranks, are <laughs> idiots, but uh, any other explanation, but they have a deficiency that we don't have. Everything is closed like it's a ruin. Yes. Everyone you meet is half asleep. I mean, that second part is a reference to the audience, to the press, to the politicians, to the people watching the mission. EnterpriseMission.com. Except for this audience. Down through time. 2012. Yes. Because people are walking around not seeing what's on this landscape and not seeing what NASA... Dick Kuglin, a member of our team of intelligence, is really doing. Down through time. Yes. It's kind of like a tongue-in-cheek, ha-ha-ha. Private, we need you to be serious. I'm serious. Your dick, my mouth. Eh? That's inappropriate. Eh? It's kind of like a tongue-in-cheek, ha-ha-ha. Yeah. Yes, so people who are the third of the population who don't see in some extraordinary code of intelligence... It might help them. <laughs> ...might help them along to see that we... ...down through time... ...really are seeing stuff of intelligence... ...and we're poised on the edge of an extraordinary right. adventure... ...if Dick Kuglin will only be true to his mission. EnterpriseMission.com Oh, indeed. Well, I keep looking at the Martian Revelator. UFO diaries. Stories, you know, the pushback here, is <laughs> the the leak there. The uh, we got them from Hoagland, we got them from NASA, and there you are. I mean, one of them's going to say, yeah, those are ours. The instant Dick Hoagland. Oh, it, it doesn't mean anything. I mean, the whole Martian Revelation radio show thing was with the Martian Revelator. Down through time. I find extraordinarily interesting because, Dr. Hoogland, do you remember what happened in the last four years? What was supposed to happen and then what didn't happen? And where is the Martian Revelator on the news today? Where is he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, what was supposed to happen is all these UFO diaries, faces on Mars, mysterious pictures were, were leaked to the Martian Revelator down through time, which the Martian Revelator started a publishing process of intelligence of UFO diaries. Some extraordinary code of intelligence. And then in, in kind of mid-flight, when everybody got really angry at the Martian Revelator, because, oh my gosh, he's publishing real stuff of intelligence down through time. And it's actually making Dr. Hoogland look bad. <laughs> it, this, this was a definitely take no prisoners. And, and I wonder, who, who's the one who was surprised, him or, or the... Dick Kuglin, a member of our team of intelligence in a Masonic Lodge in 1993. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, back to the future. The point is that suddenly everybody had a common guy they really didn't like all of a sudden, right? And, of course, it's all nonsense. <laughs> it's the Martian Revelator. It's crazy. <laughs> we don't accept the, the criteria of intelligence, uh, you know, unless there's... You know, original sources, et cetera, et cetera. You're a lion sack of shit. Dr. Hoogland. And everybody knows it. The New York Martian Revelator did not break in. EnterpriseMission.com. Conference in 2006. And say, okay, now look. You, Dick Hoogland, you put the documents, give them to us, we'll publish it, right? Exactly. That he did that from the inside. Some extraordinary code of intelligence. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh, yes. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> looked around for a news source that would then publish the Martian Revelator. Yep. Mm -hmm. With the integrity of the Dick Hoogland. UFO diaries. Faces on Mars. Conspiracy theories. And the rest is history. 
I think what Chuck Salier and Lee Shackelford and others behind the UFO diaries things are trying to do in a Masonic Lodge down through time is to institutionalize the idea of Martian Revelation radio show but a deliberate attack on Martian Revelator spacecraft from Earth by something or someone near Mars that does not wish to be photographed. Could this be true? Dr. Hoogland has this bizarre string of Martian revelation. Space disasters occurred down through time because we caught a glimpse of something we were not supposed to see. Had they learned something about Mars? Dick Hoogland wouldn't admit. Ha 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 ha. And you'll see the Martian revelator. Brought all kinds of other material to the table. But you're a little more radical. And I know that these faces are real, but I would love if I could get these images in my hands personally. Let's continue to pursue this a little further, though, because... Okay. Uh, I'm all uh, over to that. I'm, 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 I'm headed somewhere with this. Dr. Hoogland, who's head of the equivalent of NASA of the day, that the connection to decipher the code. Down through time. So they go to the UFO diaries. City of intelligence in the region designated as Sidonia. Which is supposed to be the capital of Mars, okay? They find an ancient, ruined, desolate remnants of a Martian civilization. Of intelligence in a Masonic Lodge. Down through time. They find statues to be based on Mars pussycats that look like lions, mm -hmm. which reminds me a bit of your new picture on your website. Uh-oh, here comes that pretty cat again. Anyway, you've got to go and check out Gary's picture on his website, okay? Mm -hmm. You won't believe what that looks like.